So we're talking about water-fed brush design. But in order to get that right, we have to go right back to the basics and understand the theory of cleaning. And what that means is understanding what's happening and why it works. So I'm going to step right away from window cleaning and just go with something really simple like cleaning the bench top in your kitchen lounge area and leaving it spot free or mark free. So you're going to get a wet cloth and you're going to wipe the top of the bench and what you're actually doing is agitating the dirt that's on that surface and you're agitating it into solution in a liquid which in this case is the water that's on the rag. Now if you leave that and the water evaporates you'll see the the smudge marks of your cloth and what that is is the solids that were in solution in that water uh, are being left on the bench because you haven't actually removed the dirty water. So that's why if you are to clean a bench properly you have what's called a wet wipe dry wipe. So the wet wipe is the agitation and you use some elbow grease and you push and you scrub and you get all the marks off. Now all the dirt's in solution we need a dry wipe so you get a dry cloth, wipe over softly and you can actually look at that bench and you know there's no marks on that bench. So now we want to apply that same theory of two stages, agitation, taking the dirt into solution in a liquid and removal of the dirty liquid. Those are the two stages of cleaning. We want to apply that to window cleaning. So let's look at traditional window cleaning. We have a T-bar with a sheepskin or some sort of uh, agitating surface on it and we agitate the window and we take all the dirt that's in on the window into solution. However, if there's marks on the window which can't come off then we might use triple O steel wool, bronze wool, even a razor blade and we might just cut all those marks but they're still left in the liquid in solution. And so the next step is to remove that. If we don't remove it we all know what happens. You get this big smudgy mark and there's marks on the window. So we get a squeegee in this case and we cut the squeegee and we remove all the dirty water off the glass using a squeegee. So the first step is agitate with a T-bar, second step is remove with a squeegee. If, by the way, we leave a little moon or shape somewhere where we just sort of cut and miss the, the removal process, then you're going to see that mark as a grey mark, which is the, the solids that were in that amount of water that you left on the window, those are the solids that were dissolved in there being left on the glass. So that's traditional window cleaning. Agitate, remove. And now we're going to talk about water-fed pole cleaning. So again, agitate, remove. And with water-fed pole cleaning, what we use is the bristles of the brush to agitate the dirt into solution. And we can have different bristles for different purposes which we're going to cover later. And then we use the jets of the brush to rinse the dirty water, cascade it down and remove it from the glass. Now, what we know is that if we don't agitate successfully and properly with the bristles, you'll be left with marks on the glass. If we don't rinse properly such that we remove all of the dirty water off the glass, then when the water evaporates, we'll be left with spots. So you can see that the theory of cleaning applied to water-fed pole window cleaning is really simple. It's fascinatingly interesting um, in the way that we're going to start talking about the nitty-gritty soon about how to make the best choices when you're actually out on the job to increase your efficiency because you understand absolutely the cleaning process. So that's the basics of cleaning. In the next video we talk about water-fed pole cleaning. We talk about different environments, different surfaces of glass, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, working at different heights. Like we start talking about the behaviors of brushes in the different window cleaning environments and then with that under your belt and knowing all of that, in the third set, again, we're going to start going through the detail of exactly how we can design a brush, how we can change the design of a brush. So, keep watching.